Oh, my gosh. I met Lake my home city. Yeah, I'm at Lake Point Tower, so probably you're practically a neighbor. Uh, well, actually, I live in the suburbs, but I had a relative who lived at Lake Point Towers, and I've spent some of the best years of my life it's there. Good. I love it. Right? With the big garden and all the Oh, outdoors. my gosh. Yes, yeah. it's beautiful. You have to come visit. All and right, so Rachel, tell her it. what you just, tell Linda what you just told me. Yeah, see, the thing is, now she's in the suburbs, so I don't think she can get it. But if you were in the city, you could get Tracks TV, which is my show. And I said, you guys could, you know, maybe send me or be on Tracks TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, why wouldn't I be able to do it from the suburbs? Oh, you wouldn't be able to see the show. Like here, if you oh. lived in Chicago, you could turn on Channel 25, and it's actually a commercial station that Got allows it. advertising so that, you know, it's not public access where you can't... Uh, you know, say, hey, you know, yes. watch this show, or here's the website, or, you know, tune into Linda's uh, social media. This is really regular so that you could actually be on the show and advertise your show. Got it. Okay. So All right, well, I'll keep that in mind. And it only airs in the Chicagoland area. Right, but that's right. A very big, you know, viewership. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have something very similar in the suburbs. So, you know, every every community has its own show like or own station like that, I think. Yeah, but they have two of them, really, because they have the public access and then they have like the regular channels that you can advertise. Oh, Got it. Because you cannot advertise on it. Because my, one of my producers does a lot of public access. And that's great, too, because every community has it. But you cannot advertise. You can't put your website. You can't do that. You can only say things like, um, you know, uh, sponsored by a grant from whatever. Like, yes. Yeah. Sure. Right. Right. So, Rachel, yeah, I get it. with that, well, nice I'm going to have you open this show and introduce yourself because you're that disc jockey. You've been doing this probably as long as when I started doing it. So, are you ready? Sure. Go ahead. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Screaming Rachel, and uh, I'm on Movie Reviews and more. So uh, some of you may know about Trax Records. We're pretty world famous for what we do. We're the original home of house music. I'm known as the queen of house, and I sing, I write songs, I DJ. And interestingly enough, for the last four years, we've been in the movie business. And we have, in four years, completed four films. So I think wow. that's really exciting because you can actually tune into our movies. Uh, we're on a lot of digital platforms and we were, uh, we were actually distributed by Sony, but Sony Orchard, which was our distributor, was sold to 1091 Entertainment, which is another very big movie distribution company. So now we're distributed by them. So with also that, we have Katarina Kazayas, one of our co-hosts, and obviously Linda Steele, which is in your hometown. And the reason yeah. uh, these two wanted to be on because Katarina is a house music fan. Oh, Linda, wow. I didn't even know she knew that, but she wanted to be on the show. And I hated house music, and I'll tell you why. I hated it because I was at Power 106 in Los Angeles. And I saw the changes of Chicago house music coming. I go, this is it. We're done. And then I left radio for four years. And then I, I heard some cool house music and I started to get into it. But it was La Ista Bonita from Madonna and Chicago house music that did us in. So congratulations. House music is here to stay. It's not going anywhere, is it? No, it's not going anywhere. And what's really interesting about the whole phenomena really is that it's, it's grown, you know, it's getting bigger. In fact, uh, I think that back in the day, even though it was starting to come into radio in the United States, it, it basically was more of a European, you know? Um, back then, you know, there were many superstar DJs, people like David Guetta, Cascade, Carl Cox, you know, all the big, big, big names. Uh, but, you know, today, Every kid wants to be a DJ. It used to be that everybody wanted to be in a band or wanted to be a producer, but now everybody wants to be a DJ. And I think, you know, house music is really bigger than ever. And of course, you know, we all know radio has changed and everything's changed because 
we live in a digital world, you know? It's all satellite and it's all internet. It's so different. In fact, it was funny because, uh, you know, here in uh, Chicago, there are like some radio stations. And the other day, one of our tracks artists, in fact, one of our DJs, Farley Jack Master Funk, he's on the radio here. You might know Farley if you're a househead because he was part of the Hot Mix 5 that's very big in house music that everybody kind of grew up on and knew. And you know, Farley's like, I got a mix coming on tonight. It's gonna be on the radio. And I'm like, uh, radio, I don't have one of those, you know, <laughs> which I don't, but I actually had somebody give me a radio. They gave me a clock radio, but just so I could listen wow. to Farley. So, cause I don't have a radio, you know, but I mean, it was really funny because these people were saying, well, you know, we're on the radio tonight. And I was like, radio uh i don't have one of those so you know what i mean it's like internet everything to me is like okay you're on the internet i or i can maybe tune into satellite radio in the car you know that kind of thing. so on on that note rachel i've got a question for you because you know digital is evolving radio's evolved and we were talking at the beginning how house music has evolved have you seen the opening of America back to kind of what you said about Europe, sort of spearheading it, and then Brian's initial aversion to it. You know, what do you think it is about house music that started to, you know, expand into the, uh, the mainstreamness, if you will? And there's still a lot of underground, you know, absolutely. Exactly, but there is. Different than it was 20 years well, ago or 30 years really ago. What really caused it to expand is because. Everybody essentially wants to dance. Now, back when, um, you know, what we were talking about in the past, there was a whole thing where hip hop was really big. You know, hip hop was the thing that was dominating. And for many, many years in America, except for like rock and roll and, you know, that kind of style, think about it, hip hop was huge. It was like all about hip hop and hip hop artists and maybe hip hop crossing with R&B. But uh, what sort of happened was this whole idea that I think maybe it's because people really needed some kind of an emotional outlet. Maybe it's because times got tougher and people really wanted to let go, let loose, dance. And I think that's why dance music has become so huge in America. I think maybe with all the changes that America is going through, and I think it was big in Europe because maybe people were always of that ilk. People in Europe never got hip hop crazy the way we did in America. They never really went there. And it was a whole different culture if you think about it. Hip -hop, a lot of hip hop was about, you know, uh, status, fashion, gold chain, uh, you know, uh, bitches and hoes. I shouldn't probably say that, but see, on. Probably, you know what I mean? Just a whole different way of looking at the girls that were, it was just different. Dance music was always, uh, in Europe, just a, a different sentiment because they were always different in Europe, you know? I've been going there for many years and performing there. And it was always like, hey, in Europe, they don't even have guns because that's not part of it. And at one point, you know, hip hop kind of became a really violent thing. And actually here in, in Chicago, it's very interesting because our subculture is very like gangster hip hop. It's totally <laughs> different from what I said. But it's a kind of a big old underground growing trend and, and it's something that is here. But I would think that uh, more than ever, probably, people really want to dance, especially now with the pandemic. But I think with everything having gone satellite and that kind of thing, internet, now, you know, that we've been stopped from doing live shows and we can't DJ in clubs, we can't do large festivals anymore, um, virtual shows are really taking place a lot. You know, virtual type, I, I DJ virtually, so that's kind of a thing that's really going on. Linda, I know you want to ask something. She might have froze. Well, I don't know. I don't know what I have to ask just yet, but I will tell you that. Brian, just like you, I was a huge disco fan. Still am. But as disco was kind of fading out, house music was being born. 
And it was, it was a great transition because I loved house music immediately. I was sad to see disco go because that was happening. But uh, Rachel was talking about people wanting to dance. And that is exactly what started happening. Uh, a handful of friends and I went down to the south side of Chicago in a very, very dangerous area just to get fake IDs so yeah. that we could not just drink underage, but get Go to the clubs. Clubs, so that we can be dancing to the house music. It was that was, was that's that's exactly what we did in clubs. Just so we, yeah, there there's a there was such a great transition over from disco to house music, and it's something that I that I'll never forget, and I'll it'll never leave me. It just it's stuck. I I still hear tracks every now and again. And the first thing I'll do is I'll call one of my friends and be like, listen, I'll be in my car and it'll be on like, you know, satellite radio. Or, <laughs> and we just hit reminisce and we, it brings us back and it's just so fun. And I'm sure if you grew up in the Chicagoland area, as you did, you remember Move Your Body, Love Can't Oh my God. You yes, of course. It. Can you feel it? These are all yes. tracks. All, all of it. Tax records. <laughs> yeah, I know cool. that. I know that. Do you? So we grew up listening to WCKG uh -huh. and WGCI. Oh yeah. And okay. uh, you know, it's certain there would be. I think it, sometimes it was at noon. There'd be like a half hour no commercial mix. I mean, these right. are the things we look forward to. <laughs> well, I know. I had a song called Fantasy on GCI. It was in in rotation, you know, a lot. I've had many like you know radio type like crossovers with the house music. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. I think, because, you know, you're, you're talking a little bit about uh, disco and what happened, how disco kind of went away, but house came in. And I have an explanation for that, if you guys are interested in hearing why. I would love to hear. Well, I think what happened was, at one point, disco got very overproduced, you know? It became a kind of a thing where, you know, there was like maybe a hundred tracks there were so much overproduction and young people really couldn't even afford to make that, that kind of music. It, was, it became a huge uh, budget kind of thing. And then when house music came in, you know, it became a really simplistic, stripped down, um, sort of a sound, but somehow it had that uh -huh. dance beat, but it was, it was done in such a way that, you know, young people like we were at the time could could afford to create their own music. You know, it was a lot um, simpler to me. And to this day, um, house music has never really become an overproduced, kept to that, you know, mm -hmm. four on the floor, simple, not tons of, not tons of tracks and, and uh, not tons of, of things. People don't use these great big studios like they used to anymore. They've closed them all down. It's really yeah. Insane. Well, you know, back again, back in the day, uh, I had a friend who had dual turntables, and what was so fantastic about about ha being his friend was we were hearing music long before right. it was going out on the radio. You know, because he worked as a DJ, so he was getting everything first. So. By the time things were on the radio, I, I knew the music. I knew it. I was living it. I was already dancing to it. And my friends were like, well, how do you know this? Well, when you have a friend in the industry, it's amazing. Yeah. Everything first. And again, everything's coming from Europe. So we're, you know, we're not getting it yet. It's out, but we're not getting it yet. Yeah. But having a friend in the industry being a DJ and he's, you know, mixing himself. Oh my gosh. I can't, I can't even tell you how exciting it was to be part of that and to have that part of our culture. It is like very exciting and it's really exciting to know that this music is born in Chicago on top of it. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a United States phenomena. You know, we, we, the English can't say they discovered it, although they try to say that they did. Yeah. Uh, other countries cannot say that they started house music because it started in America actually it was born in Chicago. Wow. Yeah. And it, it's a very, very exciting time. And what you say about vinyl is really important because what's happened now is, okay, at one point, vinyl kind of went away. But now, oh, vinyl it's back. Back. It's so popular now. It is so popular. 
friends of mine, they're always like, oh my gosh, I got this. Oh, did you see this? And I saved all mine. That's so good. I have That's all good. kinds of stuff. It's really, so every now and again, I pull out a good one and they're like, oh my gosh. So it, it's really, you know, it's really fun that I've, that I've held on to them. It is great. And the thing is tracks for the first time in over a decade, we're going back on vinyl. And I think wow. it's so exciting. That's you know, a great idea. Because the thing is the label, a lot of people don't know, we were actually born in a vinyl pressing plant in Bridgeport on the South mm. Side. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we would go from the, you know, creating it to the lathe where a reference disc would be cut. And then we would just, you know, be able to take it directly to a club and actually see, are these people going to love it? Or are they going to dance? Or if not, we're not right. going to put it up. So and we, you know right away, because the dance floor will clear immediately if it's not something yeah. that they want to hear. Exactly. So it was really great because we had that advantage at tracks of being actually born in a pressing plant. And I think that's why um, our label has really stood the test of time. And that's why we've done so many great releases. Now, you know, luckily for us, uh, before the market got swamped with, now that everybody can do digital, okay, everybody and their mother and their brother and their granny, <laughs> and I don't care who, can all do a digital release. And mm -hmm. so because of that, people don't even know what to play. So the good thing was, because by that time we had already established a brand with the track's name, you know, we were able to survive. And that is a and grow. And that's why it's really been interesting today because we were never big on producing CDs. We almost went directly from vinyl to digital. And now we're happy to be going back on vinyl. And my new release, which just went number one on Kings of Spin, which is a very big kind of a, a DJ site with a lot of the worldwide DJs are members of it, just went number one. And I just got that news tonight. And that is going to be our first release on vinyl. But we have about six releases coming out back to back all on vinyl. That's so Katarina, awesome. I know you're going to ask Rachel a question, I but I want to... I wanted to jump in. You go ahead, Brian. No, I want to ask you a question before you ask Rachel. Yeah. You were traveling around the world, and when you yeah. were in Miami, what music were you listening to? Because it was different. Yeah, absolutely. So I had the pleasure of, you know, really being able to take 10 years and travel around. So I've seen, you know, house music in Hong Kong, in Tokyo, oh, in, you know, in, you know, in Czech, you know, the Czech Republic. Um, and as Brian mentioned, I used to live in Miami, and of course, you know, the music, Winter Music Conference, mm. where they would oh, yeah. showcase a lot of the, you know, a lot of the music that was going to be coming down the pipe for the summer. So, you know, on, on that note, Rachel, my question to that, because I've seen it just so huge around the world, how do you, what do you attribute the staying power, what do you attribute the staying power to of, um, you know, people like yourself? People like Carl Cox, people like Felix the House Cat, people like Roger Sanchez. Oh, I mean, you know them all. Those are all my boys. 20 years, yeah. Yeah. And you drop a track and people still go nuts. So for aspiring musicians, what's your advice on that? Well, I think that it's really important to, if you are creating this type of music, you know, you're going to want to appeal to DJs, and dancers, because that's you know the key to the house music scene. House music has always been about freeing your body, dancing, feeling good. It's a feel good music, and I think that has a lot to do with the staying power. Years ago, I actually had a musicologist in New York during when they had the uh, uh, they had they used to have a New York conference, the Tommy Boy Records would run. And I remember this musicologist who was from the UK said, you know, it's going to take 20 years for people to really catch on to this because it's organic. It's going to be a slow grow, even though we were really disappointed because we thought like, oh, no, we're stars, da, 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 you know, because we felt really good because there were a number of people who really were catching on to us, but we didn't know it would take that long for the world to really catch on to it. And it did, you know, it did take that long, but yet it's, it's also, I think, 
helped to create that staying power because it wasn't like just a trend that people pumped money into at major labels to make it happen. This was something that, you know, bubbled on its own. And I think that, you know, we see a lot of music today that it, it's not so much today because now that everything's different, now that kids and, and, and people in general are actually going back to finding all these this music that they like themselves, it's not about like, you know, uh, going on the billboard charts. That's not necessarily it. So for this type of music, I think if you're trying to get into house music today, uh, it's, it's a good thing to go with DJ pools, you know, which are groups of DJs that actually listen to the music and they'll rate it for you and they'll promote it for you and they'll get involved in telling you like, no, I wouldn't play this on my radio show. Yes, this is for me. This is great for the club. This is great for the dance floor. No, it's not. So I think, you know, at, at the heart of this, it's going to be creating music that you can test on people to see how it makes them feel. Because if you're into house music, it's going to be about that. That's going to be the major, most important part. Hey, Rachel, talk okay. about when I was, uh, I was, sorry, Katarina, you want to say something? I was, saying, I was just saying that's so true, right? Because you can, you know, good house music makes you feel literally the vibration in the air yeah. like it's just there's so much so good. there's so much energy yeah people say it's spiritual and i believe that and i believe that's a lot of what you know creates this success because it seems to cross all the boundaries of age race uh class you know you can go to the trendiest party in ibiza or you can go to the south side of chicago and you can still see the different kinds of crowds that love this music and they may be totally different you know but they all feel it and that's what i think is the success rachel i was going to ask you when i was disc jockey in connecticut i would be the only black person in there because i was the disc jockey so i had to make sure that i kept that job at that point because i knew what they wanted to dance to so talk about what it was like to be that woman to disc jockey because there weren't a lot of them and I was always waiting for, why aren't, if I'm the only black guy in an all-white club and they won't let minorities in, is I well, feel for the woman who's going to come up, but I wanted to see that. Talk about that aspect. Well, you know, the, the really funny thing is when house music first started out in Chicago, it was a totally African-American movement. So mm -hmm. with Frankie Knuckles and Ron Hardy, those were the two major DJs who were playing it, you know, um, I would be the lone Caucasian woman, right? <laughs> I'm curious, I would be the only one. But everybody was always really cool to me. Some people didn't even understand, but the thing was, I had been into like punk rock myself. I wasn't a disco fan, I gotta admit I wasn't. Because I didn't like this idea of the line dancing and the dressing up, you know, just special dresses. I was, I was a punk rocker, so that wasn't for me. And when House came out, and the first time, you know, somebody said, because they came to see me at a punk show, and they said, Frankie Knuckles is mixing your record at the warehouse. Now, first of all, they said mixing. I never heard that term. What is mm -hmm. mixing? Wow, so that's interesting. And then it's like, okay, Frankie Knuckles, who's that? Okay, he's mixing it at the warehouse. Where's that? Let me go find out. Let me find that place. And when I did, and I saw how the music affected the people, it changed my life. And so that's how I kind of, because it, it was the excitement and energy of punk, but it was a different thing, because it was more spiritual at the same time, but it had that same excitement, and it was just something about it that made me decide, okay, this is what I want to do. Because when I first made that first record, Fantasy, with... Um, you know, uh, two young African-American, Jesse Saunders and Vince Lawrence, they had seen me do my punk song. But they thought I was the one to sing this song, right? And I sang it, and I didn't even really know it was any good. But then it went all over radio. To this day, everybody's like, please play fantasy, da 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 da, -da. So... So that was the first thing, was, was being a woman and being Caucasian woman. Then when it came to the DJ part of me, what happened was 
even though I was always writing songs and singing songs and producing in the studio, house music became a DJ medium. So it was like, if I want to play festivals, which I have done, and I want to really be in the mix with the kind of music that I started creating, I've got to DJ. I've got to learn about mixing. I've got to, I've got to go into that realm. And so I did, you know, and I've been doing that for quite a few years now. And uh, I love it because I'll DJ at a festival and I'll still like sing to my record or maybe I'll play an instrumental and I'll just go off and make things up and sing to that. But yeah, so being a, a there aren't that many female DJs, first of all. Not at all. No, it, it's, it's still a rarity. Um, we have a new female DJ producer on tracks that I really like. She's actually out of France. Her name is Barbara Croft, and she, she DJs in all these very trendy, wonderful places in the south of France. She's a cancer survivor, and uh, she's just sent me a new track, besides all the great tracks we have of hers that we've just recently released. And so we're going to collaborate. And I think it's so great for uh, you know women to be coming up in this producer DJ space because as you know, mm -hmm, not at all. Us, so so I'm cool. familiar with uh, Julian Jumbin Perez, oh, which yeah. is also there, right? Everybody and Frank, know. yes, and Frankie Rodriguez. He mm -hmm. was a member at my gym. I owned a gym, uh, two gyms, one in Elk Grove and one in Des Plaines. And he was a member at my um, at my uh, Elk Grove location. And when he first signed up. And he signed up and, you know, he signed the contract, Frankie Rodriguez. I'm like, huh, I knew a G DJ back in the, and he was like, that's me. I was like, oh my gosh. I was, it was like, I was so starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of exciting. And the thing that's interesting now is now I work with a company out of the UK called Rights Inc., rightsinc.com. And they have a fitness channel called Body and Balance. So their new thing that they want to do is, because you know, people that are into fitness, they, they need, now especially that they have to go virtual with it, because not that many people go, can go inside of a health club at one time. Mm -hmm. Until it's changed and you have to still wear a mask as you're working out, it's really difficult. So now that trainers and people are going virtual, they're gonna need legal music that they can use on their mm -hmm. shows. Mm -hmm. So Right Sync is very excited that this kind of dance music that yeah. we have is great for working out. Right. So it, it also really fits that whole health and fitness genre. And mm -hmm. so more and more, so actually Right Sync is talking about, you know, this whole like tracks TV and dance tracks and a whole new kind of fitness area so that we can take all this great new music and the classic music and all the music we've been creating all these years and make it available for people to work out and uh, and just enjoy in their homes because there's gonna be a lot more of that, being that that's the way we're going to be living for quite some time. I'm, I'm part of um, uh, Fit.Live, which is also based in, in London. And uh, they give us a list of music that we can use for our broadcasts. And same thing that, you know, cause they own the rights to them and so forth. So they're very particular about, it. so they gave us a, a list of what we can pick through and choose. So I try to find, you know, some good upbeat stuff. I have to watch for, I have to see who they use. So I'm not sure what company they use. Cause that's, that's a kind of a big issue for people. Mm -hmm. That really is because it's very difficult with the whole licensing thing. And, exactly. uh, and with Rights Inc, one of the great things about Rights Inc is, you know, this is so complex because Greg Roselli, who's the director, of the show, you know, uh, we want to take this and we want to make this worldwide, but I have to have licenses in the UK. Yep. I have licenses right. in all these territories, Europe, this, that. It's a very complicated thing, mm -hmm. uh, music clearance. But luckily, we have a really big catalog of thousands of songs. Yeah. It, it just to occurred to me, I think they use Soundstripe. Are you familiar with, is that a competitor? Mm, I don't know about Soundstripe, but they might even be having some of our stuff available. Maybe, maybe. I'll have to look into that. Because we look, you know, we uh, use um, Ultra Music is our publisher, and you might know them from Ultra Fest in Miami, and uh, they have a lot of the huge DJs that they deal with, uh, like Geta, and uh, Pitbull was one of their people. And uh, they have, yeah, so they have many people. They're our publisher. So, and 
And uh, so a lot of times different companies license our music all over the place for compilations, for use on television, Pose, the uh, HBO, I think it was HBO. Or, I don't know who did Pose, but that, remember the TV show about voguing that was out this, this, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this last season? They licensed a lot of stuff from us. So it's exciting. We get a lot of licensing opportunities. And now I think with Right Sync, we're really going to aim towards more of that because now, um, you know, we have to think about the virtual world. We're not going to be doing, as I said, the concerts anymore. Uh, Lala Palooza said they probably won't have concerts till, uh, you know, 22. So, you know, we have to change our world. Yeah, I get it. So, we have yeah. five minutes. Ekaterina, I know you have a question. So when you were traveling in Ibiza, what was really, what were you listening to? Because I can just see you dancing. I can't see you dancing, but I could see you dancing. Really, what did you really like? Yeah, I think the one thing for people that are not house music fans, that I think is really important to understand, is as Linda was talking about, right, there's different genres within the genre. Ah. Well, you know, there's a big difference between hip hop and rap, oh, right? Yeah. There's a big difference between commercial house and underground stuff that's being played at DC 10. Right. And so it just depends on if you're a, you know, um, sexy house fan, or if you're a techno fan, or if you're an EDM fan. And I think what I love about it is just like Linda said earlier, right? Depending on your, um, your mood, you can find something that's going to hit that frequency. And if you want to go 100 miles an hour, you know, and feel like you're doing some pretty stuff, it'll be super fun. And if you want to just go like chill summer beats, yeah, you, you know, like Linda was saying, like in Ibiza and the Med and Mykonos, you know, in, in um, the south of France, then you absolutely can as well. So I think that would just be maybe my closing comment is if you're new to house music, check out tracks because they are amazing. <laughs> There's so many artists yeah. that they've got produced and uh, I just am so excited to be on here with you today. Like, and, uh, and the thing that I wanted to say about what you're saying about how it, it has all these kind of offshoots and types of house. Right now acid house is becoming very big and you know that's that's kind of uh, started in Chicago with Future and that's now really big especially with the kids and I just did a new album called Acidic. So I got all into this acid house for this album. It's very fun. But what I wanted to say is I think of house music as being the rock and roll of our generation. Because you know how there was alternative rock and hard mm -hmm. rock, and heavy metal, and just all these different things, kind of uh, light rock, uh, all this. Same thing with house music. The, the difference is the house beat is everyone wants to dance. So there's all these different styles of dancing and all these different kinds of people and all these different, you know, if you want really underground, you can get it. If you want the garage house, if you want the, uh, like you said, the EDM, the harder, 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 whatever you want. <laughs> That's exciting. It is very exciting. And I'm it so is. happy to have grown up in it and to carry it on. Rachel, I have a request. So this is what was said, uh, and it all involves going to Linda's place. <laughs> so what happens from there? That's right. We're gonna hook up with I'm Katie O'Reilly. Katie's gonna cook our food, maybe at Linda's place. But I want to see if we can get together yes. with you, most likely at Linda's place. Is that possible? We can make that happen. Yes, I would love to do that. I would I love, love that. that. And I'll tell you why, because we're going to take our show there. So when we go to Chicago, so it only makes sense. So Katarina's going to come and Terry Marie's going to come. Well, maybe I can bring a little DJ set up too. Oh my gosh, that would be so fun. That you know, would be so great. A little mixing for you guys. <laughs> oh, yes. and then Linda, so does you know, I am working on Pitbull for you. It's going to take a little bit. I'm in contact with his people. I, I figured since she mentioned it, I know you like to work out to it. It's happening. I can't even, I will be so starstruck, I will be speechless. That would be so awesome. Well, you know, so when awesome. you do get to Pitbull, mention Patrick Moxie, because that is the president of Sony Ultra, and that's my good friend, and he actually was Pitbull's manager. Ah. So if you look at Patrick Moxie, because now he's the president of all electronic music at Sony, he's got a long history, and Pitbull was somebody he was really involved with. Wow, Daphne, wow. Pitbull. So many great people, but he is a big tracks fan. And so we're a Patrick Moxie fan. Great. So, 
<laughs> so screaming, Rachel, it's been an honor to have you on because I knew about tracks. I mean, it's almost like we have to have a part two because we got to go into some of the other clients that you represent who I knew back in the day. And it's really interesting. I know that would be fun because, because I can only imagine what she was listening to when she was traveling. And I'm always fascinated by that. And obviously, so Linda is going to, the party is going to be at your house. You better be ready. I'm so ready. I my house is made for entertaining. That'll be great. Well, yeah. can't wait to meet you all in person. The yes. world is nice, but in person will be so much better. For sure. All right, great to be here, guys. Thanks oh, so Rachel, much for give me your social media me. links. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Well, we've got an Instagram at Trax Records, which is T R A X Records with an S. And we've got, of course, uh, Facebook. But the best way to probably connect to all of these things that we have is to go to Trax Party, because this is easy, TraxParty.com. So T R A X party.com that will connect you to our website, which will have all of our social media pages because we've got uh, verified pages and Instagram on Facebook, on Twitter, everywhere. There's tracks records, but tracks party will also give you a virtual link to join our zoom every Saturday and check out all of our tracks. Ah, DJs include cool. myself. That's great. Okay, Linda Steele, give you okay. social media links. Yes. My social media, I'm on Instagram as Linda Steele Fit Bod. I'm on Twitter as Linda Steele Hot One, the number one. And then I have my emails, Linda Steele Hot Bod at gmail.com. I have a website, Linda Steele Hot Bod.com. But if you Google me, you'll find me on all of them. And if you Google Tracks Records or Screaming Rachel, you're going to find me everywhere too. That's fantastic. All right, Katarina, you get the last. Give you social media links. All right, yeah, and mine is super easy across the board. It's Katerina Kazayas. My name's not that uh, common, so it's easy to find me to katerinakazayas.com or at Katerina Kazayas. And this was really great, Rachel. Thanks for being with us. Um, Linda and Brian, you're awesome. Always so much fun here at Movie Reviews and More. And uh, absolutely, we got to chat about a part two. Great. Yes, yeah, I'm ready. All right, so for everybody, Screaming Rachel, Katerina Kazayas, Linda Steele, this is Brian Sebastian. This is Women on TV. TV, IT247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, the Women's Broadcast TV channel and network. And we will see you. Oh, and if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. And we will see you next week.